Welcome back, everyone, to Merge Conflict, your weekly developer podcast, talking about things in technology, things about Mac OS, things about Windows, things about Copilot, things about your favorite GPTs and LLMs. Uh, and this week, Frank, I want to talk about some really cool software that I've been talking about, at least for the next two minutes, as a little update to my MP3 player uh, update from a oh. few weeks ago. Yeah, I, I saw that you had a tweet. You are going, I, what was the context for your tweet? I think you said something like, I am trying to simplify my music listening life. And and I, I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was your tweet context. But I have I have a rebuttal to, to you. Okay. But please continue. Your rebuttal to it would be accurate because I know what you're going to say. I did not say simplify. I did not say simplify uh, because there is uh. no way am I possibly simplifying my life <laughs> currently, currently, Frank, because there's this. I am specifically saying I'm trying to trim our music services down to zero. Zero. That's a very low number. There's a huge difference between zero and one. I'm trying okay. to get them to pay me to listen to music, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> is this a Seinfeld routine? What's going on here? <laughs> um. So, so is, what was your rebuttal about it being simplified, by the way? My, my rebuttal is uh, I use the Amazon Dingus family of devices, mm-hmm. and uh, I say play me music of any specificity, and sometimes I get really generic. Sometimes I make up adjectives and country names, and it still finds me music to play. Yeah. And uh, I love that. And so I, I think... For me, I'm actually listening to a larger variety of music than I've ever listened to in my life yeah. because I can just say, hey, Dingus, play whatever purple bebop from Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll you know, do I, something. <laughs> I think that there's a few things is one, you can still do that because with your Amazon Prime, you're getting Amazon Music. It's in there. So technically, even though I play for Amazon Prime, I get Amazon Music. So if I really wanted that, yes. Additionally, YouTube Music, Spotify, they all have free things. You're not zero, you liar. Okay. I said, I said, okay, sorry. I should say paid music services. <laughs> paid music services. That's how me. Amazon gets you. Okay. Yes. So paid music services Good outside of the normal. I am thinking about canceling my Amazon Prime, but we'll see if that comes out one day. Oh, gosh. So, um, okay. So I should say paid music services. Okay. So here's the lineage. Here's the timeline, Frank this is going to be the podcast people. If you don't want to hear about the, the history of my art music archival, you need to stop listening now. Cause this is about what's going to happen. Oh, boy. okay. This is, this it, is going to get nasty. How far back are we going? Are we going into the nineties or at least staying above the millennium? No, there will be in this millennium. We'll be in this okay. millennium. So the year 2000, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Barely, to see. Okay. Barely so, this millennium. So when I was in high school, I got an MP3 player. And it was one of the first MP3 players that wasn't an iPod because I didn't have Apple devices and I, and they were too expensive for me. Uh, you, you gotta help me with the timeline a little bit here. Uh, so at this point, the iPod was pretty well established. Uh, let me look iPod wiki. So this, I want to say 2020, 2003 was the iPod 2000, 2003. So this is 2003, 2004. So early days. So yes. the iPod is around, but you're like, eh, Apple, too expensive. I ain't got that money, right? I don't have that money. What I was doing was I was outside in suburban America, you just mowing the grass. You just explained all of everything I needed to know, by the way. Just it, I, everything was just explained. Okay. <laughs> I see. We're, we're reliving childhood. Please continue. So I'm carrying around. Here's the here's the catalyst for the situation. I'm, I got... A whole you have the tower that's sitting over here of CDs. You know the tower of CDs. I miss mine. We've, it we've it all collected had. so much dust, but it was all beautiful. It. And then we had the visors that you put in your car, and you would uh, Heather and I relive the collection that we'd shove so many in there that it would actually expand yep. it. And then when you didn't put enough CDs in there, they'd fly out like a like a like a like a ninja star and try to cut you. I hated that. I hated that. That was the worst part of CDs was CDs in the visor. No, yeah. CDs went with the maps behind the seat and the little seat pocket thing. That's where <laughs> yeah, CDs perfect. went. 
There you go. So this was my childhood. Lots of CDs. My sister has CDs. We go down by you CDs, all the things, right? Now, um, I really got into Napster when Napster first came out um, as a way of totally being legal on everything music. So there was an era of this, but I had lots of yeah, CDs. It's statute of limitations. You were underage. I, I think you're yeah. fine. It was the easiest good. way of getting legitimate backups of the CDs and music I already owned so I could have it digitally. Mm-hmm. And that's totally illegal. I'm not a lawyer. Um, now, I would cut the lawn and I'd have my CD player, Frank. Now, we were on a riding mm-hmm. lawnmower. And when you would hit stuff, yeah, we had a ride on a lawnmower. It was pretty, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and Fancy. CD players, when things jingle jangle, skip and that's no good and then i found out that you could put your music not on a cd and on a little tiny memory chip and it would just play the music and you wouldn't skip so i wanted everything rebuttal. to be digital rebuttal me no i didn't have the that's things i didn't have expensive sony walkman cd expensive. deluxe anti-shock whatever what no i had it? the cheapest possible cd player Portable. What was it like? Forty bucks? How much was that Sony CD? I was buffer. fourteen years what? old. What do you want from me, Frank? You know, I was in college. I think I probably had less money than you. Um, I I remember watching like it actually had a digital display of the buffer. Oh yeah. And if, if you knocked it and you're listening to your jams, you're like you're watching that little buffer display. Like, oh oh <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god what terrible devices i'm so glad we don't have those anymore so you, yeah. you moved on to memory sticks cds are terrible they're very pretty i i, I do wish like memory yeah. sticks were prettier but um yes yeah well cds are terrible so let's not use those ever again yeah so uh i got really into digitizing now this is kind of through my college years like really digitizing my entire collection and i did this with mm-hmm. with movies as well with my, my yeah. dvds and blu-rays we all went digital. through the space so I, I was really, really into, uh, me and my buddy Luke, we were really, really into making the ID3 tags perfect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you're one you, of those people. Yep. ID3 perfectionist. And in fact, you could embed, I believe it was a 1500 by 1500 box art into the MP3. So now like you'd, you'd rip these mm. MP3s and then you'd make them ginormous. <laughs> <laughs> by like embedding a bunch of metadata and a huge yeah. image into every single thing. Because then you could have it display on your iPod. Then I had an iPod eventually. Because I had like the free iPod websites. I don't know if you know. You'd like convince your friends to sign up for free offers and you'd get credit. And you'd get an iPod. Like that's how, it, that's how I made money through college. But um, I think that actually has come up in the podcast before. But to bring yeah. this back to a programmer thing, it is hilarious that you can just put pretty much any data you want into an MP3 file. Um, when I worked at Microsoft, we would do, we would research these kinds of attacks. I worked on the 2d image stuff, but Mm -hmm. the, um, video stuff is just as bad, if not worse Oh yeah, Um, for being able to just jam arbitrary data into those containers that does who knows what, if you even try to interpret it at all. Um, so you were just making me think, yeah. Those ID3 tags with like metadata, just metadata in general. Yeah, you could put anything in there. Like I remember people put MP3s and MP3s just for the fun of it. Yeah, just got to put it all in there. And there's an amazing app called MP3 Tag, which many people may know, uh, which has been around forever. It is like the ultimate tag editor. And you would do this. Now, iTunes is also, by the way, back in the day, at least iTunes was a great metadata device and the cool part too is if you were playing music inside of itunes and you have the box art itunes would do this cool like screensaver mode basically that's what luke would show me that's what would inspire me to do this kind of screensaver mode that would show you the box art while you're listening to your music on your imac anyways it was super cool so i was like i want all this stuff there so i spent i went down the line which was not only making all of the uh tags like Mm -hmm. super clean you know, yeah. all that, all that, like the years, the discs, the numbers, all the things. I also featuring made sure that, yeah, the featuring, oh, yes, the hardest, the, yeah, various artists, which is hard. And then I made sure that the file names were also like in sync too. Like all yeah. of them were like number, artist, song. And then on top of that, though, Frank, the folder directories, ooh, they were money, man. They were like yeah. alphabetical. 
this, disc one. I mean, it was just a thing of beauty. I spent hours making <laughs> this physical thing that was just like, here's all of them into this digital, beautiful thing, Frank. It was, well, it was like, the, it was like the leaning tower of Pisa because it was so beautiful. And yet I didn't know what to do. Do with all of this beauty that was here. Hang on to that. Let's not go it. to the negative side yet. Let's yeah. stay on the positive. Um, yep. There is no merge conflict here because I'm a little bit older than you. So I was able to afford the iPod at the time. Nah. And I had the same obsession though. Uh, get, get that metadata perfect because I had my beautiful CD collection. I wanted my beautiful mm-hmm. CD collection represented in the app. I had given up on all the uh, pirating stuff at at this point. So yeah. mine actually was legit. Who's going to carry around the CD? CDs are terrible. Um, but I remember this is when apps started getting really good, where online databases started getting really good, where just from the track durations, they were able to match albums. And I remember it was like an epiphany the day I finally got an app that could do that because I went from hand typing everything in like a complete, I don't know tool <laughs> to use a 90s term into uh into an advanced computer hacker i pressed a button and it filled in all my metadata and then even better it synchronized the file names to the metadata because for the ocd your file names have to match your metadata with your album structure and by artist unless you have mixed artist then it's harder it is hard it, that is the one thing that i recently going through didn't have anything there no i agree so there was a lot of these uh, through the years so there's things like media monkey for example which has been around for a long long time that's one that i use a long time ago um that was out there and and i did the same thing so i was like okay i have this but then something else happened which was i didn't even need to do it myself because google came out with a service called google music and what google music <laughs> did for you is this was before the it. streaming <laughs> Did you use okay. Google Music? Um, I think I did. I, I was a little burnt out at this point because mm. I think this is post Zoom, right? Yeah. So this is post Zoom, post Apple. Like I, I was in the Apple ecosystem, I think, at this point, mm-hmm. or just getting into it. Um, and and the Google Music thing came out at this time, so I was a little burnt out. Everyone was doing a music service. Like this was first wave music service stuff. This is 2011, okay? So this is like, this is after some of that stuff, but this is still pre-Spot... I mean, I don't know when Spotify started. Let me look. But... Sure. um, uh, Pre-Spotify being big. Spotify 2006. Okay, so I guess it was... Yeah, pre-Spotify being huge. And, you know, I was using Pandora a lot. I was using all this stuff. But I wasn't ready to give anyone money, but I did want to have all of this music that I've been curating and getting out there. And like you said, by by this time, I was kind of on the downtick of buying CDs, but I was buying CDs because, you know, if you were, if you, by that time, like all this download stuff was like just garbage anyways. And also when you're downloading music, like all the bit rates and all the things were no consistency. Oh, you want atrocious. high quality. You want to yeah. go in and say, give me the, I, I wasn't like, a, I want flack person but i was an mp3 <laughs> person i did make the mistake i did have limited hard drive space frank and that's where yeah. google music came in which was oh here's what here's what we're gonna do mm-hmm. upload your music to us any music we'll do all of the id matching for you we'll i'll, I'll, yeah. I'll do all of it for you and here's the service it's free just stream the music just mm-hmm. stream the music your music stream now you can buy albums if you want, this is before YouTube music or Google music became a paid service. So you still buy albums. Yeah. Right. But you could upload the music. So I uploaded 50 gigs of music. I said, here's all the music, 760. Yeah. There's all the music, right? All the albums. And yeah. a lot of my music was mixtapes, which is like really hard exactly. to yeah. categorize. And by mixtapes, I mean, rap mixtapes, not like mm-hmm. here, you know, this is what I call music. These are like off of uh, Dat Piff and all this other stuff. Like, you know, this was an era. This is a golden age of hip hop mixtape releases. Like I am saying I have like 20 mixtapes from little Wayne, like that are all in here from okay. like the golden era. Right now, these are hard to tag because they weren't like released. Right. They're like on like yeah. these download sites that like, you know, artists are putting up to this is like sound. Yeah. 
you, so, you're bragging, but I, I do want to interject. The yeah. equivalent in the rock world is just concert uh, recordings. Yes. My God. It's just there's 8 billion recordings of every band that are 100% legit and legal. Online. Yes. Yeah. So so I upload all this music. And I'm living the good life because I've been an Android user. I'm an Android user, have been for a long time. Not, not anymore, but you know, still am on occasion. But so I'm, I'm loving my music. I'm doing this, blah, blah, all this stuff, right? And then eventually, you know, Google Music became a paid service that you would just subscribe to, and and it would be like seven dollars a month. You get this music, cool. Now it's YouTube Music, all this stuff, right? Okay, so all my music is uh, is up there. But when Google Music turned into the streaming service, they said, "Hey, you can no longer upload your music." However, don't worry. Your music still there somewhere. And here was the Google Music promise. Okay. You're streaming your files. Sure. Not their files. Your files. Include. Your files exist on some S3 bucket somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they exist. Google they're using S3. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Google's S3. They're on Google's. They're in one big S3 bucket, says James. That's my bucket is mine. Uh huh. That redirects right? to an Azure blob. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So my music there. So I haven't thought about this. I haven't thought about this 50 gigs of music, Frank. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Forever. So uh, the Apple equivalent of that was iTunes Match. Yes. Uh, which I don't know what year that came out. I participated in. But I was never, I, it wasn't as good as the Google one. Because as mm-hmm. you said, the Google promise was if it's not in our database, we're still going to, uh, we, we have your file. We got, got your it. file. We got, got the music. I have it. Uh, because I did this with like Zoom. Uh, again, like every music service did this in the beginning. This was just an early trial of this kind of stuff. Um, uh, it, iTunes Match progressively over the years and i don't think this is in my head i'm pretty sure this happened just lost songs bit by bit like there would be an album with like three missing tracks or there'd be a missing album that would work on some devices not others and for anything the youtube album would sync but that one would not sync to any other device for whatever reason so it was Honestly, this is also early iCloud days. Like iCloud has improved. Like maybe it's better now, but I just remember I got burnt. Like I lost so much music, in my opinion, through yeah. iTunes Match, and I gave up. Yeah, and I didn't have this music. I, I think I have a I have a, a, a NAS server like sitting around there, which I think has my music back up on it, but I mm-hmm. don't have my music. I do now on my Google Drive or on my OneDrive, just Ooh. because you know it's fifty gigs, like. Back in the day, to buy a hundred gigs, now you just buy a terabyte for ten bucks a month or whatever, right? Yeah. But back in the day, jigs, audio is small. <laughs> yeah, jigs were expensive. Well, audio is small unless you're embedding ten megabyte images into it, <laughs> right? So you know, if Google's going to stream in my music, it better be high quality images that I can't see. So, do you think those are coming through? Do you think it kept all your uh, like? Okay, so. The the Google promises were streaming you your actual file. So yes, that's a great test. Like put a zip file into the ID three tags and see if it's and see what happens. <laughs> so I, that you know, the, here's the thing: is they when they moved to the Google Music, they retired the upload service, so it's gone. You can't even upload anymore to them. They got rid of it, and um, they the the little tool would also let you upload, but also let you download. Now that being said, inside of YouTube Music. You can go to my account and playlist and there's a uploaded music category where you can see all of your music oh. that's uploaded. So it still exists. The S3 blob Weird. exists, Frank. It's there. <laughs> it's there. And you can download those offline into huh. the app, into the app. Crazy. Okay. So, I didn't know that one because I, I, I don't think I ever did upload to Google. So you got me there. So I'm in this world where I can get my music from YouTube Music download it yeah. into youtube music but it's not like in a format that's very very nice no so i'm like how do i get my music I, give me my files google give me the files i need it so i find a reddit thread or a stack overflow uh, one of the two uh, from like seven years ago and 
the, all these people asking the same questions. How do I get my music? And then every six months, it's like, same method works, same method works, same method works. It's like, okay, cool. I love those threads. That's when the internet's at its best. And you feel like you really stumbled onto like something great on the internet. When it's not like, when the end of the thread isn't, uh, is, is, is this problem still exists? Does it work? I, I love it when the end of the thread is, yep, that works, that works, that works. Still works for me. So works much. for me. Still good. Page still 50. works. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Still works. But yeah, okay. I like that. Love so it. how do you think I had to get my music back from Google? Oh boy. Okay. I mean, ideally it would just be some random folder on Google drive because Google went through a consolidation phase and everything became a part of Google drive for better, or for worse. Uh, so that'd be good. The bad way. And I hope it's not this is you do like one of those request my data requests from Google and they send you in six months, they send you a zip file with a directory listing of URLs that last for 30 days that mm -hmm. you can download all your data from. How about that? Somewhere in between. Uh, you're very okay. close on both accounts. So oh, really? <laughs> you first have to start with the latter. So you have to use a service, which I'm pretty sure didn't exist forever, but it's called Google Takeout. Um, which I've heard about, but I never mm. use until now. Google Takeout is a way of doing what you just said. It lists all of the places where your data can live in Google services, and you can request that data. Yeah. Now, you have to basically filter it and say, give me YouTube and YouTube music. And then you have to <laughs> open it up and say, only give me my uploaded music to YouTube music. Else it would give you like all of your YouTube videos you've ever uploaded as well, oh, which funny. is interesting. So sure. well. Yeah. Google they exist. Takeout. I I love this. Okay. Google Takeout. Take Google Takeout. I, I feel like we just turned this into a PSA. Everyone should know about this because this sounds wonderful. I'm going to go Google, play with it. Google Takeout. And I, there's so many things. There's so many options. <laughs> so you can request it. And I say, okay, I click on YouTube, YouTube Music. And then I say, um, customize. And it says, only uploaded YouTube Music Music. I say, okay, only give me that. And then I say, okay. And then they said, um, how would you like... They say, how... <laughs> They go, they go, how would you like your zip files chunked? This is what I just <laughs> said. Oh, my God. They're like, can you log into this Usenet group and download them? Uh, it, it's 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 64 bit encoded. I mean, base 64 encoded and it's a RAR file, but you can trust us for Google. It's totally good. So here are the options. You have five options uh -huh. for the zip file. Do you want one gig? Yeah. Two gig, yeah. three gig, four, four gig, gig. Yeah. or five gig chunks. That's up to you. My God. So, so they're taking an MP3, which is a highly compressed format, basically at the bleeding edge of compression, and putting it in a zip file. I, I yes. feel sorry for your poor little NAS that's going to unzip these files. <laughs> yes. Um, that was my fear. And I said, okay, well, at this point, I didn't know how much music I had. So mm -hmm. I said, all right, I'll use the default that Google recommends, two gigs. That seems fine. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. I would have gone, because you have a good internet connection. So I would have gone for the biggest one. That's what I would recommend at this point. Because okay. <laughs> they next said, thank you for requesting your Google takeout. We will email you in two to four days. <laughs> oh, that's so right. Okay, this is exactly what I was dreading. Yeah. But... But by the way, where but, 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 but where do those zip files go? Into your Google Drive. Oh God, do you have to pay for them then? You do. You got to pay for the storage. Make sure you have you the do. storage. <laughs> oh God, there's no other Jesus. option. They, they will only put it. So so that's better than here's a random link yeah. that'll expire. They literally take your files and put them into your storage account, which yeah. is kind of ideal. Okay, but why? But still a zip file? <laughs> you know, guess how many... Uh, two gigs was my default. I had 50 gigs of data. How many zip files did I have? 25? 27. I had a little bit more. Like 54 is compressed. Okay. I don't know the uncompressed, right? So, okay. Uh, 27 the, zip files. <laughs> they're transferring it to your Google Drive or whatever, linking yeah. the servers together. Yeah. But they're still putting it in a zip file. Into 27 zip, zip files. files. Why don't... Why not? If if you're okay, 
Okay. You're just going to unzip it. What else are you going to do? Of course I'm going to unzip it. So the first thing I need to do. Wait, wait, James. Are you going to burn a CD with a zip file of MP3s of your music? You could. You literally could. I'm going to put it on a Blu-ray. Um, no. Okay, so here's the next piece of the puzzle. Oh, that's right. Sorry. They didn't have CD size, so it was one gig or two gig. You couldn't do 640 mags and put no. it on a CD? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Now, here's the best part, is for me now to unzip these files, I have to download all of these files. So I install Google Drive on my Mac, and I say, all right, take out folder. It's in a folder called take out. Save all these for offline. So it, it downloads right. all 60 gigs. I'm like, I got to do this before the end of the month when my data cap refreshes. <laughs> oh, right. So I'm like, oh, yeah, download all this stuff. So I download all this stuff. I'm like, okay. I'm like, at this point, I say, Google Drive, pause. Don't don't do anything, right? Because I'm yeah. about to unzip everything. Yeah, I go in and I unzip. So one, I have to make sure I have a hundred and this is we were talking about yeah. me running out of storage. I have to make sure I have like at least 120 gigs available on my MacBook because I have 50 gigs. You gotta I gotta double it. Yeah, <laughs> double it plus, right? Because then it's uncompressed. I unload and I un- unleash. Frank, yeah. How do you think they decided? What do you think was in zip folder one? Take out one, take out two, take out three. What do you think is in take out one and then take out two? If you were writing mm-hmm. the Google take out algorithm, how would you decide what is in each zip? I'll be honest. I bet you they didn't decide very much because like there's going to be some API that they have to access, some generic API that lets them fetch data from the YouTube music service. And that data is just going to come in in some random order. So I figure it's going to be pretty dang random, uh, first by type, and then pretty random, uh, the data and the order of the zip. A more fun answer would be chronological. That'd be cool. But Chro- uh, Chronological would be cool. Alphabetical, that would be mm-hmm. cool. File size, that would be interesting. No. Oh, lame. Uh, um, how about none of those? It's just none. There was, there was nothing. Random? There was... No rhyme, no reason. Every That's folder, perfect. Completely random. Completely random. One good job. Hundred percent random. And at this point, also, I will say, I don't remember what my fi- original file names were. I want to uh-huh. think that they were crystal clear. These were not crystal clear. They were very right. They were they were cleaned. They were mostly the name of the song. If there was duplicates mm-hmm. of the name of the song. Because like sometimes you might have a multiple artists with the same song name, no artist names, but the MP3s would be like you know, let's say the song was called like "Hello World," it'd be "Hello World" and then one "Hello World Two," "Hello World Three," yeah. right? If there was a bunch of them. Now they did have ID tags in them, so that was really cool. They were okay. all there, so I had to unzip That's all of it. them. Yeah, and ID tags were there on uh, not all of them, but on at least half of them. So I assume that something was weird and wacky in their system where <laughs> uh, these aren't my original files a hundred percent, but maybe yeah. they are, maybe they're not. Maybe they're <laughs> essence of the original file. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they remixed it. Um, I, I, like know. To, I don't know what happened a hundred percent, but yeah. I have to say the other services, the competing services, it was more of a match like iTunes match was. Yeah. They just proved that you had that song and then they would use their copy. So that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to throw out there, I don't know if anyone does this anymore, but if you back up like your iPhone or whatever to your Mac, that backup is just a bunch of files and you can go browse it and go yeah. see all your stuff. Like um, your messages, images are in a directory. All your music files are in a directory. Um, it's fun to go digging in through that stuff. So much stuff is in a SQLite database. Like all your messages are just in this giant SQLite database. Uh, it, it, I don't know. I always found like digging around in backups really fun. It's it sounds like that's kind of what you're doing. Except the weird thing is it's not your backup; it's Google's backup. So you're like digging around in their backup. Exactly. Like sometimes it's fun to take a old floppy disk or MP3 uh, or like uh, CDs, like put them in and like what is in here and yeah. dive yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This one not as fun. Um, okay. So I, I move all of them. So I unzip them and then I move all of the music into one directory. Right. And I'm like, okay, now I have all of this music. And I was like, yeah. how do I even listen to me? 
music on, yeah. on my device because the finder doesn't show you like a bunch of tags and stuff like that. So I guess I could load them in iTunes and yeah. I go, okay, there's got to be a way that the they don't soft- still like Winamp. Winamp's still not around. I, I thought we were. I thought we were just reverting back to the early 2000s here. Well, so I was like, I was like, maybe I should install iTunes and like try to get the ID tags and all this other stuff. Okay. And then I was like, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be software that I used at least 15 years ago that still works t- today, right? Sure. There is a catacomb of old and mm-hmm. new software that's out there. So the first thing I did, I actually paid for software. I actually paid ten dollars okay. or twenty dollars or something like that for some software. Um, I'm sure there's other software that's free that just does it, but because I have so much of it, they're like, "Oh, if you want to do everything in bulk and do all this stuff, it's done." Right? I got like eight thousand tracks. Yeah. So I think Media Monkey now has like a yeah, like a thirty dollar one. Um, okay. The Audio okay. Ranger is the one that I use. These are all on a Mac, by the way. Still a premium price, huh? Okay. People are still collecting music. I'm like, hey, listen. Yeah. Okay. It, if I just installed what's this app called the, the Grand <laughs> Perspective, I gave them three dollars. Hey. If, if you create good software that works, it's good. So I downloaded the Audio mm-hmm. Ranger, and it does all this. Like you said, all this matching, it does all this stuff. It's like cleaning up all the tags, and the Audio Ranger was pretty good. And it was like, hey, if you want to do more than twenty at a time, then you know that you got to buy, buy the Pro. Give us some version. money. Give me yeah. some money. It did a lot of stuff for free. So if I wanted to then take it and they would rename it and put it in all subdirectories, that's the feature I really wanted. I was doing that all manually before. That would do it for free. So, but I'm like, I want, I know my ID tags were good, but I want them to be really good. But then I found this other piece of software called Picard. And I figured you'd like it because I, John I know Picard. this one. You do? I know it. Of it's course. This runs is famous, famous software. Sir. By a sm- Music Brains. I had no idea. I'd never heard of it before. Yeah, I honestly can't remember what I used it for, but it, it it's it's famous. Um, is it just Mac software or Windows, it... Mac, every every flavor of okay. Linux humanly possible? Okay, yeah. Uh, what what what's its pedigree then? What was it designed for? Would you say the Picard? Yeah. Um, I mean, from what I can see, what it is is it's like basically. I think the Media Brains Foundation, like their whole thing, was all about the tagging software, like those, yeah, the thing, the 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 fingerprint, basically. Like every MP3, every music thing has a fingerprint associated with it that you can identify, yeah. and then links it up. So the whole thing with the the the, the Meta Brains or whatever Media Music Brains or whatever it is, is all about that, from my understanding. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, sorry, I keep hesitating because there was a little revolution here um, when we started to do like the YouTube content identification algorithm, like the little service that runs in the background. And it actually kind of listens with scare quotes, listens to the music to try to identify what it possibly could be and creates a fingerprint that way. And so I, I think the uh, Picard ones are the old fingerprint where it's really just like I don't think they do file size but it's track length and a few other funny little details yeah I think that so there's from like my understanding is so they actually have like multiple products including Audio Ranger which is so funny um, it must be in there but basically from my understanding is they have like this uh, ridiculously huge database of just everything yeah. under the moon and I do think that the, ta- so I think what's happened, I think that the tagging has come like a really, 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 really long way for whatever the identifier that they're using is for the Picard mm-hmm. software. It says that they're using the Acoust ID. That's what it's called. Okay. Fingerprints. It allows files to be identified by the actual music, even okay. if they have no metadata. So that's where it's evolved into. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. So it is actually scare quotes listening to the song to see what it actually is. And that's fantastic. I didn't know that that was generally available, honestly. Yes, it's out there. And it, I'll give you a website URL here. I'll put it in the show notes. The cool part is that it can listen to about 7,000 tracks in like 50 minutes and tag Mm -hmm. all of them. And what's cool about it is it has like a really cool drag and drop 
like UI and then you yeah. can decide and it'll show you like, cause sometimes it can identify stuff, but if there was like multiple discs, right? Like maybe there's a deluxe edition and non-deluxe editions trying to pair them up and who knows where my MP3s came from. Yeah. Like, I don't remember if it was a deluxe or non-deluxe edition, but the other cool part is that it can also do all the cover art for you too. And you can say, give me the original size, give me the 3000 by 3000, mm-hmm. right? And all this stuff. And they can one button click, save, do all of it. It's got a drag and drop UI. Very nice. And there are other software, Audio Ranger, I can then fine tune the data a little bit more in there. And then I can do move basically, which is the, hey, move to subfolders and disk folders and all this stuff for me automatically. So that was my five or six hours yesterday on my day off on Memorial Day. It's a bit of a regression, I'll say. It's it's very hipster that you're back into early 2000s technology. Yeah. Um, I love it. It's fascinating. I, I tell you, every time we talk about this kind of stuff, I get closer and closer to going to the, um, I don't know, the Goodwill and just buying a bunch of CDs and ripping them just kind of yeah. for fun. Like, go get some CDs. I don't know if I'm that hipster yet, but um, you really are... I don't know. It's, it's nostalgia. Obviously, there's a lot of nostalgia here, but it's also fun. Um, I've always been an album person, and that's yeah. one thing I do miss from the Dingus music playing lifestyle. Uh, Dinguses don't do albums, and I'm a, I guess I'm a Gen X album person. I like to listen to whole things. Yeah, I'm the same way, which is why I always liked Google Music, and because Google Music for a long time there were only albums. And it wasn't like the mixtapes and all this other stuff. And I really mm-hmm. like that. And now it's more like just, yeah, listen to this and that. I guess even on YouTube music, I would still try to listen to albums uh, in yeah. general. But yeah, I was never a Spotify person because of it. Um, but I am excited because Heather has all of her music on an, a USB drive from a long time ago. Oh, by like a thing. Yep. And I have my music now. So we're going to sit down and I have my other new dingus. This is the other mp3 Ooh. players have two this is a really cool one this is nice this is another one that comes with a uh, another on describe for the podcast james is holding something that's a lot bigger than an apple watch but um still reminiscent because it's just a, a a black rectangle with a screen on it yeah um yeah I, you know it's if you clip. put a band on it it could almost be a watch but no too big it's got a giant clip on it Mm-hmm. And I don't believe it's a touch screen. It's just a screen screen. Is that correct? It's just a screen screen. Yes. With buttons yeah. on the side. Yes. Um, I dig the buttons on the side. It's very yeah. nice looking. Does it work? Is it Bluetooth? How, how, how does one get <laughs> audio from little device into brain? So, yes. Yeah, so I decided as a test to buy the cheapest mp3 players possible and i bought two and they were about like nine and twelve dollars and they have like 16 gig little sd cards on them but i you bigger ones in them which is funny because if you got like a 128 sd card to be more than the actual mp3 player. it's awesome yeah but i said if this works well then we can upgrade it and the idea for this one is to put it in the car and um this one just has a, a 3.5 millimeter jack on the bottom so boom put headphones in there into the car right because there's a headphone there's an audio jack in the car audio jack here Put things oh, you're on lucky. Loop. Not all cars had that. Yeah. No. An audio both jack. My yeah. old smart car does from 2009 and our Forester does as well. So okay. we're good to go in both cars. So no that Bluetooth, good. huh? Okay. The, there's ones that are like $20 that have Bluetooth in them. So okay. if you want them, you you can totally get them. They're, they're, they're all out there. But we said, okay, let's give this a test and go. So our next thing is to do, um, See, put the music on the device and then see how that works out you know there's not like syncing or anything but the idea is like load it up with like you know hundreds of musics of hours of music and then just hit random every taylor swift song ever all the t-swift lots of t-swiz yeah so and that just lasts you forever pretty much so that, that's been my goal so we're in a really good place frank I mean, we're moving okay. along are you yeah are you okay it's a lot of nostalgia uh i'm curious how it ends up because just FYI, my iPhone also contains a hard drive in it that can contain a lot of MP3s, and there are several apps that can play MP3s through a phone. Um, has speakers built into it. It can also do Bluetooth. But I get it. You're trying to go um, specific device, and I don't know. Like, here's here's the thing: 
if you had anything plugged into your car in Seattle, you would get a broken window. Yeah. So I can't leave anything in the car. Hopefully you live in a better neighborhood than that. But um, I, even your small device, I would still have to take it out of the car every time I got out of the car. Mm. Um, and I would find that annoying. Um, but the, maybe you can get away with it where you live. Yeah. The, the nice part about the Subaru is that the audio jack and the USB are inside of the uh, center console Very armrest. Good. Yeah, They're both inside of there, so which means it's 100% self-contained inside there, which is nice. So you don't have a device with a screen just blinking away on the dash. Good. Okay. Great. Exactly. Yeah. So All that's right, sort man. of where we live. Weird yeah. hobby. Um, I approve because I'm always here for nostalgia. But I, I, at the same time, I'm like, man, we moved away from this technology for a reason. So it's a good experiment, though. Um, because I haven't, you, you, you tried dumb phones for a while yep. and now you're trying, uh, dumb music players. So I applaud your efforts and I continue to be, uh, interested in your results. Yeah. I'll see how it goes. You know, I will p- report back, but I think it was a fun journey through, hopefully everyone enjoy this journey of music <laughs> and MP3s and where we're at today. But I want to say this is that there is a ecosystem of application development out there just like you know plex did very good things for like archiving you know movies yeah. and music and all these things and servers there's been that in fact i tweeted about it and i got some responses about people using different software and like this thing and like <laughs> that thing you know so and go to the thrift store and get the cheap music so it's out there you know i, I think you know it, it's an idea and you can own your music again frank you can own it and you though, even when we we're buying CDs, I'm still not sure we owned it. But okay, hey, I mean, what if it's a pretty gracious <laughs> license. It's a pretty yeah. gracious license. But uh, if if it makes you feel like you own it more, great. Uh, the way I own music is I get the sheet music for it. I learn how to play it, and then I own it because I can create it whenever I want. But did you? That's but owning. You? That's owning the song. Yeah. Unless you try to be too close to what actually they sound like in an uncanny way. And then, I don't know. Well, thankfully, given my skill at instruments, that's not something I have to be concerned with. That's true. Me as well. So, all right. Well, let us know if you are on a, you know, I'm not the only person doing this type of stuff. I've read whole articles about people going back to the. So you say. <laughs> to the, to the, the DVD days, to the, all the things. So I'm just saying. People, okay. people are pe- this is a thing people are doing stuff frank don't judge me um let me know if you're In on Oregon. your own <laughs> your own your own journey of of music or movies or whatever my whole goal is to really trim down as many services as possible because it's so easy okay. to get into a cycle of yes just collecting them all yeah. so that's my yeah, goal but let me know what you think right into the show merge conflict fm let me know if I'm crazy, if you agree, if I do, you don't agree. Um, but I think, Frank, thanks for uh, humoring me for this Google Takeout moment. And hopefully you've all been inspired to go check out Google Takeout at a minimum. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least we had that one good takeaway. That's all you need. Good takeout. Right. Take away one take good out. takeout. So that's we're going to take out podcast on a high note. And that's going to do it for this week. I'm James Montemagno. And I'm Frank Krueger. Thanks for watching and listening. Peace.